I would like to talk to you today about prayer, Islamic prayer, and the kafir, the non-Muslim. So you may be a non-Muslim, but you play a part in the prayer of Muslims every day, and I thought it might be interesting for you to understand this. Muslims pray five times a day, and it's one of the five pillars of Islam. Their prayers are usually done in Arabic, but I've had these translated, and so I thought it might be interesting for you to hear how you, as a kafir, play a part in Islamic prayer. The first prayer, O oh Allah, we ask you for help and seek your forgiveness, and we believe in you and have trust in you, and we praise you in the best way, and we thank you and we're not ungrateful to you, and we forsake and turn away from the kafirs. So here's our first mention as a kafir, and it's Muslims are supposed to turn away from us. At least they pray to do that. Well, why is this? Well, there are no less than 12 verses in the Quran which state that Muslims are never the true friend of a kafir. They can be friendly, but they're not really their friend. They're not a true friend. And this prayer reminds Muslims of this. Going forward, O oh Allah, we worship you only and pray to you and prostrate ourselves before you. And we run towards you and serve you and we hope to receive your mercy and we fear your punishment. Surely the kafirs will receive your punishment. Again, I mentioned to kafirs and kafirs are going to hurt and suffer in hell. Because the Quran is filled with vivid descriptions of hell. There's over a hundred references to hell and they're not just mentioning hell. They give vivid pictures. The one I like best is, is as your skin burns off, you will grow new skin so that your suffering will continue. And so in this prayer, we have reminder of that. The second prayer, O oh Allah, verily we seek your help. We believe in you, we put our trust in you, and we praise you, and we're not ungrateful to you. O oh Allah, you alone do we worship, and to you we pray and prostrate. For your sake we strive. We hope for your mercy and fear your punishment. For your punishment will surely reach the kafirs. Again, another reference to kafirs and how we are going to suffer. But it goes forward and says this, O oh Allah, punish the kafirs of the people of the book who are preventing others from following your way. Now this slightly odd reference means that Christians are keeping others from joining Islam and this prayer is to help defeat that action. Now the third prayer is more than a prayer, it's the first surah, the first chapter of the Quran. And it has seven verses. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment. Thee do we serve, and thee do we beseech for help. Keep us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray. Well, who is Allah angry with? Well, Allah is angry with the Jews. And who has gone astray? Well, these are the Christians. They're the people of the book who have gone astray. So here we have references in three prayers of the Muslims towards the non-Muslim, and they are all negative, without exception. They all ask for suffering to be brought to them. Now, this is not too much of a surprise, perhaps, because the Quran is filled with suffering that's to be brought upon the Kafir, Every mention of the Kafir in the Quran, the Sirah, the Hadith, that is the biography and traditions of Muhammad, are all negative and very harmful. Well, the prayers reflect this. So five times a day, Muslims include Kafirs in their prayers, but it's that they will suffer because they are so wrong and they should be harmed. Thank you.